Hi everyone, it's Holly and I am the maker here at Missouri River Soap. We are based in Northwest Montana now. And I'm excited to make my first batch of rainbow soap up here. It's actually been quite a long time since I've made our classic rainbow pear soap. And it is a bit of a hat day today. I made this one myself and I just love it. And I tend to wear a knit hat when I'm in here working. So I decided to just roll with it for today. So in this video, I'm going to be prepping to make rainbow soap. And a lot of work does go into this one because I do split it up into six different batches. I've tried it a bunch of different ways and this is just what I find is the most successful for me to make sure I get the straight layers, not to be stressed out. And it's just worth the extra effort to me, the extra work to prep to actually make this batch. Now the first thing that you're going to see is I'm going to be mixing the lye solution. So I'm gonna have all my gear on. Now what I do is I come out here first thing in the morning. I mix up my lye solutions, I have the windows open, I turn off the lights and I go. And I'm usually gone for a couple of hours, usually eating breakfast, you know, doing some computer work, having my coffee, do a little knitting or crochet, and that's just my routine. That's just what I do. So that way I'm not in here, you know, smelling the fumes. It has time for the air to move through and dissipate, etc. So I will be prepping my lye solution. I'll be prepping the hard oils, lining the mold. I'm trying to think of what, what order I went in. Um, my liquid oils, I will be doing, um, measuring my mica colorants, you know, just the whole shebang. So I hope that's your kind of a video. I know a lot of people like to see more of my process. So that's what this video is going to be. So. Let's get started. So I am going to measure the hard oils as a whole and then divvy them out. I'm going to start with my cocoa butter and I have these wafers from Brambleberry right now. They had a sale at the end of the year and it was just um, the best to get it from there compared to all the other suppliers. But I really don't love these bags. I have a new batch that's come in from Jedward. over by 0.3 so now for my coconut oil and what I do is I have a five gallon bucket and then I just keep it around it's empty from sober's choice and then I put my other bucket on the top my coconut oil is also from Brambleberry at this time and I have to use a chisel and a paddle to break it all down it can be it could be quite the workout because it is chilly in here today with the windows open, especially for the lye solution. My lye solutions are all cooled off at this point. Mm. This is why I buy the cocoa butter wafers because you can't bother me to do this with the cocoa as well. This is plenty of frustration in and of itself. I've thought about getting some like bucket warmers. But so far, I don't want to mess with the liquid either. So I just make do and it's not as bad in the summertime. Okay, so I am going to go put this on, I have a stove right over there, 
and I'm going to go put this on my stove top. I'm going to wash my hands and clean up first and then I'm going to take this over and put it on my stove to melt. Okay, so while my hard oils are melting over on the stove top, I'm going to get my mold ready. So this is craft freezer paper and I have been using this one roll for years and years. So as you can see, I probably have a lot, well, I don't know if you can see or not. I probably have a lot of years left though. So my particular molds are 11 by 18. I like to have six and a half inches of overhang. So I'm going, looks like I'm still a little bit crazy from the oils. Um, I'm going to do, let's see, 18 on this mold. Um, I'm going to go lengthwise first because it's 18. And if you can see, but it is really, it's kind of like a rain slash grapple. I don't know what that is, but anyway, it's doing that. So once I have the 18, then I still need six and a half on this end. So I just try to make small marks. Okay, Whew, got a tickle in my schnoz. All right, so then I know I need to take five inches off of this. And I forgot my scissors. This is just extra. I use it to like put a spoon on, etc. Where I want a little bit of a, you know, of a grease barrier. Let me think. I'm I'm in a different spot, so I feel out of sorts. Okay, so then I like to have a lip, a little uh, barrier on this bottom sheet. I see I cut that quite poorly, but I'm going to do one inch. That did not even mark at all. I'm going to do an inch on this side as well. I usually make a bunch of these at once, so it doesn't take me very long once I get into it. It's usually each time I have to remember exactly what I'm doing. And then it takes me a little bit longer. Let's see, I go ahead and I fold here to my line. This is my overhang, or my edge that will overhang on the outside. it through today I'm feeling a little bit out of sorts. So then I like to fold it up. This feels different than what I'm used to doing so I kind of wonder what am I doing different today that this feels different. So now I need to cut. I don't cut all the way down. I just need to my Dover bit is wild. He's wild. He loves this. Oh, he's, I think he's got the crazies. And I do cut to the marker on the sides here. And you'll see what happens momentarily. I'd take the camera down and show you, but then I'd have to put it back. Okay. So my husband builds these molds, and I, this one I asked for 18 by 11. So now I'm going to... makes like a little box when you get it all folded right again 
I don't usually fuss with it like this. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can see that it is just made the perfect little, like, oh, grab a tape. I guess my printer has decided to calibrate. I just use a little masking tape. Just make sure those are, that line is fully in the edge. Okay, so there you can see we have a, you know, nice little, nice little spot there. But now I need to cover these edges as well. So now I'm going this way, and this way is 18 inches. So again, I want an overhang of about six and a half inches. My mold is 11 inches wide. And then again, I want six and a half. And I do like the double layer to help protect my mold. Now I'm going to go this way and make sure that I've tucked this in well. And this little flap just folds over. So you can see how it's protected here. It makes a nice corner. But then this does cover that up. And this just helps with seepage in the corners and I just it's how it's just how I do it I've done it several different ways through the years but this is how I've come to like it so this mold is now ready to receive soap okay so now I'm going to divvy up these hard oils and so whoop, splattery going to attempt to be very careful and do it like this, but I may just want to pour it out into another pitcher because this is kind of heavy. I definitely think I could uh, fight a lot less. This is a heavy pot. I debated melting them all separate and then I was like that's silly I don't want to do that I do like to do my life solution separate I like that to be just super duper precise but I'm going to do the oils like so and I will have to scrape this very very well to make sure I get everything It's a hint tedious, but thus is my rainbow soap. I've done it different ways, and to me this is a guaranteed success to do the se separate batches like this. So by scraping out the pictures, it's not going to be exactly right. So to be exactly right, you need to over, if you're going to do it like this, you have to over measure just a little bit, 
like in my case is like 0 0.20 ounces so that you could get the right amount. So I'm going to measure out my liquid oils now, castor and olive. Now, the reason why I don't measure all the oils together and then um, stir them, you know, and all the things and then divvy them out, it's because all of the oils have such, the uh, liquid oils like the castor and the olive, they have different like weights and I noticed how the castor sinks to the bottom and the olive tends to be towards the top and so even though I'm really stirring and people do master batch their oils as well I personally am the most comfortable not doing that So for this next portion, I'm going to be measuring out my mica powders. I have over here a collection of colorants from Nurture Soap Supplies. I mix and match. I mostly use the Vibrance colors, but instead of their orange Vibrance, I use Electric Orange. Um, and instead of Pink Vibrance, today I'm going to use Wanderlust and Queen of Hearts. Now normally I would put in trial by fire, but I'm not wanting to use this uh, polyester 3, acid red, etc. I'm just wanting to stick with the mica, titanium dioxide, iron oxide type ingredients. So I don't have any neons this time. I usually add some neons. Um, like purple has manganese, violet, tin oxide, etc. So I'm going to be just mixing and matching, but I do have to wear the mask again because these powders are airborne. Titanium dioxide is on, so pretty much because of the titanium dioxide, pretty much all of these are on California's Proposition 65, but it's only in the powder form. Once we mix it into the liquid, it drops off California Proposition 65. So it's important that when working with the mic is in the dry form that I wear a mask. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch over the mask, get my gloves on, and you'll just kind of see it in a little faster scenario. I have my fragrance measured out and I will be measuring it each time for each batch and it is a pear blend it's so beautiful and it's classic and it is a blend of my own so we keep that a little bit on the down low and then I'm going to be adding in coconut milk and this is my favorite it's the native forest organic coconut milk unsweetened simple and its ingredients are organic coconut milk, which is organic coconut in filtered water. So that's, it's a little, uh, 
I may have to put it in some uh, a water bath to fit it out because it seems it seems quite solid in there this day. It's not always solid like that. Look at that beautiful coconut cream. So yes, I will probably just try to give this a bit of a, a water bath, heat bath, just to get it blended all together. So all that fantastic fatty coconut goes in as well. I don't have a microwave anymore. I probably would have popped this in the microwave for just like 30 seconds, but I just don't have one anymore and I don't plan to get one, so I'm figuring it out. Okay, so I have one more prep step and that is to make sure my mold is leveled because why go to the, all the effort of a straight layered soap only to have a wonky layer? So I have a level here. <laughs> it's a new one because First of all, I was stealing my husband's level and he kept wondering where his level was. And oh, I very sheepishly, I have your level. That's back in Missouri. Happened a little bit here as well. And then he bought me my own level. And then he stole my level. And I had to go find my level and I sanitized it and everything with alcohol and all the things. And then <laughs> I went to find my level yesterday. I couldn't find my level. He doesn't have my level. I don't have my level. so. He bought me a new level at Home Depot last night. He says I'll probably find my other one now, which is completely true, but the story of the level. So I'm going on my mold closer to the side here out of the way. I'll work on making soap right here. And so I just want to check that it's level. So that's looking good front to back, side to side. Well, it's looking really dandy. If anything, let me look. No, this way. I think if anything, I need to put just something right here. So I just have a folded up piece of paper towel. And... Hmm. Let's see, what direction does that take it up? Yes. So if I take that out, now it's, that doesn't affect that a whole lot there, but I think I need one up there too. Alright, that's looking that changed things. It's actually I'm I'm very particular. I think I'm gonna call that good. I don't think I'm going to put it. It's just a a little bit off right there. Move it up. Alright, I think I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to take my masking tape and create a marker for myself because I want to make sure that when I pour it in and I shimmy and I shake it that I'm putting it in the same place. Alright, so to get set up, I just have some paper towel to put my stick blender down on. I have my stick blender motor, and I just need this smaller shaft because I'm doing the smaller batches. I will have a pitcher with distilled water to rinse my stick blender between each batch, and I do like to use distilled because that is going to go back into the soap. Now, what I do is I sanitize it as well in between. So it's not that big of a deal, but you know, got to do things right the first time. So I want to get some pictures before I actually get started pouring out the coconut milk because you know once you pour it out, your, your container is not as pretty anymore. 
but I'm going to get all ready to go and I am going to close out this video. This has been the prep for Rainbow Soap and I hope you will come back for the making of Rainbow Soap. Thank you for watching.